haven't seen any. Okay. And actually, no, I take that back. I saw, I saw, I think three. I shot at one, but it was a, it was a weird shot because we were walking on a trail, and Danny, that's the dog, was in the was in the brush and he kicked one up but it went like almost like straight over my head oh no way so i i was i was holding it and i was like i was like i was like cracking <laughs> it like this you know and by the time i had swung it around it was already boom it was way off yeah yep i did shoot but i missed um it's gonna get a lot better here over the next yeah probably week for sure two weeks i think would be two weeks would be really ideal good. and that's when i'm gonna go um to uh where we do our deer hunting our rifle hunting is in um Cook, Minnesota, if you know where mm-hmm. that is, yep. around there. Yep. Um, my buddy's got a big, uh, um, you know, it's like two or 300 acres of hunting land out there. Cool. So I'm going to go out there next week, um, next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend. And, you know, there's lots of different places to hunt grouse around there. I feel like the further east you go, the better off you yep. are. The further north and the further east, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. With grouse. I feel like they got a lot of pressure around here, but mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's a lot easier for me to, to, you know, to go on a Saturday morning or go yep. after work yep. or something. You don't have to drive yep. that far. I, I even think too, you know, if you get 20 miles east of Park Rapids, yeah. like closer to Walker, it's yep. twice as good. Yep. Yep. I've gone to, uh, what I've, I've run into some grouse west of town, yep. but around here it's, it's kind of tough i think the last yeah. couple of years the the population's gotten a lot better yeah but uh, yeah, yeah yeah just just walking into some deer hunting spots like i've seen more grouse the last couple of years than i have the first five years so i've yeah. been here seven years or so it's cyclical yeah mm-hmm. where where'd you grow up south of the cities okay. uh, down in northfield oh northfield yeah yep. okay we ready to go i think we should just keep that in and keep going all right <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're from northfield uh, minnesota originally yep yep yeah. um and uh, you've been living in Park Rapids for about seven yeah, years. Yeah, about yeah. seven years. Yep. Yeah. So I, I came to Park Rapids after I went to school in uh, Fargo. So yeah, um, got a agronomy degree at NDSU and then uh, uh, took a job in Park Rapids right out of school. And, you know, it was just pretty awesome. I, I really fell in love with the area because you're, you know, 10 miles away f- or 20, what is it, 20 miles radius is 200 lakes or something like mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. it's it's uh it's really been top notch bird hunting around here. Um, yeah. Obviously, grouse is down a little bit, yeah. like we were just talking about. But uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty awesome. It's been a um, awesome place for for me to live. And now yeah. uh, my wife is from town here, and uh, I don't see us leaving ever. So <laughs> you have any kids or anything? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, one kid. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. yep. Yeah. So. He's uh, almost uh, almost twenty months twenty months today yeah. actually so or two two days ago. So. Has he shot a bull yet? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe for Christmas we're gonna get him a little suction cup bull. I, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you so you like fishing and uh, yep. doing other kinds yep. of outdoor activities? Oh yeah, too? yep. But archery is your passion. Yep, yep. Yeah. Archery is really my passion. It's uh, it really is kicked off. It it never really was until the last uh, probably four years, three years. Um, a lot of things just kind of started to fall into place right at the same time. You know, uh, I really just started to, um, uh, I, I did a couple archery shoots, uh, mm-hmm. some 3D shoots, uh, and that was really, really cool. And it really just made me really want to dive into it, really fine tune my things. And then mm-hmm. I started working at Smoky Hills uh, yeah. for a, a pretty decent stretch. And, um, I, I just really took to took to the archery section and and just loved working on bows, setting up bows, selling bows, and it just um, it just all kind of started to fall together. And uh, I ended up uh, parting or taking a new new career path yep. after Smoky Hills mm-hmm. and uh, At the Department of Agriculture. Right? Yep, yep. yep. Okay. And I just uh, I missed working in archery every day, so I ended up yeah. making a business. Uh, uh, a part obviously part time very part time yeah, business sure. but a side just, gig yeah. yep yep just enough to stay relevant and, and work on bows and and stay in the hunting industry as, as much as I can so. well, right off the bat let's mention it what, what what's the name of the business yeah yeah so my uh, my business is KK Archery uh, okay. LLC um, and it's uh, I started it in July I think it it yeah. I did and it's it's taken off way more than I wanted it to, um, yeah. <laughs> which is a good problem for sure. So but is it consulting or what, do, what is it's, it? Uh, it's service work. Okay. Um, it was, 
uh, so yeah, it's it's just service work. So tuning bows more specifically, okay. helping people uh, put new strings on, um, just general tuning. You know, just uh, mm -hmm. minor tweaks can make a huge difference in your in your archery um, archery shooting yeah. experience. And that's so that, you, you work with people and they yep. show you. I mean, so it's not just like you fix the bow, but you're also kind of fix them in yep. terms of yep. how they're yep. shooting and stuff yep. like that. There's a little bit of coaching mm -hmm. involved. A little bit of too. coaching involved too. Yeah. And uh, and over this archery journey that I've had, it's I've really learned that little things make all the difference in the world. You know, from from cam timing to um, dr correct draw length to uh, having your rest set in, at the perfect perfect position and yep. just just those little little tweaks make all the difference in the world and and my goal is always to have somebody enjoy the experience that much more to get them in the woods that much more mm -hmm. um and and have them enjoy archery as much as i do so so what is it about archery that that draws you to it oh man um <laughs> where do i where do yeah. i start yeah um it's uh you know, it's, it's the peace and quiet in the tree, you know, you, or, or wherever you are, it's, whether it's a big game hunt, whether it's sitting in a tree stand around here, you, you're alone in the woods, you're alone to think about what, uh, uh, whatever's going on in life. Uh, I do a lot of, uh, thinking about, uh, thinking about God and, and mm -hmm. praying with praying, yeah. uh, when I'm in the tree and just, uh, a you know, good place for it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's you know, you're in, you're enjoying God's creation essentially, and and I I've really enjoyed that. I mean, that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. parts. And then uh, seeing animals in their natural element, and and just enjoying uh, beautiful weather and yeah. whatever else. I'm, yeah. So so hunting is is a you know it's just a wonderful passion because there's so many things you can get out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. What is it about the the um, the the sport or the challenge of archery in particular that interests you, as opposed to you know say like I mean you could have specialized in rifles or mm -hmm. shot you know and so, anything you know anything else, but like is it is it have to do with the concentration involved or just sort of the the challenge of not having the use of gunpowder mm -hmm. or like what's what is it about it that 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 makes you excited? I, I think it's more the challenge really. Mm -hmm. um, it's like I was saying, it's, it's all these little things that just combine into one goal and, uh, building consistency with it. And, mm -hmm. and a rifle hunter can say the exact same thing, you know, building his rifle loads where, you know, it's this many exact grains of powder needs to be perfect with this bullet and, you know, just yeah. constantly tweaking on those loads to then, uh, f use that final product. Well, it's in my eyes, it's, it's the same with archery where, you know, having the right arrow selection, the right broadhead selection, the right grains on a, on a broadhead, um, and really just have all combining all these little tweaks and tunings and, and adjustments to where your equipment performs the best, where, uh, yeah. um, yeah, where you're the most efficient you can be. And, um, you get to the point where you're confident in your equipment and you... Then it's all just a mental game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It is all just a mental game. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's uh, take a look at the equipment here. And, and, you know, I thought it'd be kind of fun because you, you brought a bow. Mm -hmm. And um, for those people who are not familiar with archery, that maybe you could kind of uh, point out the different parts of the bow yeah. and then get people familiar with the terminology yeah, and absolutely. things like that. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, so I brought my bow here. Okay. Um, so now is I, it is this your, like your primary? This uh, is my bow? this is my primary bow. Okay. Um, so so, so first of all, let's start by saying this is a compound bow, right? Yep, it's yeah. a compound bow. It's made yeah. by PSE. It's it's called the PSE Levitate, and it's uh -huh. it is a few years old now, um, but it shoots really. I have it shooting extremely well. So yep. Um, so the it's it's a carbon bow, so it's designed to be lighter but also too one thing that i really like about it is hunting late season uh mm -hmm. when it's cold yeah it does not hold the you don't feel the coldness that uh you know that you would with an aluminum bow okay. it doesn't send those so are cold. those the two basic materials mm -hmm. that they're making yep. so it's either carbon yep. or aluminum yep it's kind of the same materials that they used to use for hockey sticks yeah right? yeah, 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 yeah 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 but now they're all carbon yep. yeah yep so um, 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so right here is the riser. Um, so that's what that's what this is. Uh, so it should point point to the riser yep, here. Yep. Okay. So it's this whole black piece right here. Okay. Yep. What, yep. what, what a lot of people would just say that's the bow. Yeah, right? that's the bow. Yeah, that's what uh -huh. that's what a lot of people see as. But um, yeah, so this is what's made out of made out of carbon. Yeah. Uh, designed to be lighter. Um, so it, I think this bow comes in at like three point eight pounds. So it's a, it's it's very light. About uh, eight tenths of a pound lighter than just a standard aluminum bow. Which yep. if you're holding. You know, what I like to do is I do uh, a lot of public land hunting where I'm walking a mile plus back into woods. So cutting weight back makes a big a difference. Big difference. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, this one's out of carbon. Uh, some of the aluminum bows now are, are getting cut down on, uh, on weight too. I think Matthews came out with one uh, this last year that's, I think, the same weight in an aluminum. Uh-huh. Um, so that the the... It's it's really neat to see the hunting industry change and technology change and everything else. But uh, I guess moving on. Yeah. Uh, so we have the the cams here. Uh huh. Um, so there's two cams, right? Two cams. There, is, is the cam the wheel itself, or is so it... so? Um, no, a cam a cam is a cam. Uh, technology, I don't know, ten years ago has there was a lot more like wheels at the top. Uh huh. Um, but now and and they still do make bows with wheels at the top. Uh, with technology changing, you see a lot more bows with with two cams, and that's partly to take let off let off mm -hmm. off of the bow. Uh, so when you're drawing back like this one, it's uh, eighty to ninety percent let off. So when you draw back at seventy pounds, uh, it comes. You're only holding what quick math eight pounds yeah. of actual weight so it takes off 90 percent of the weight which uh, is pretty crazy so that's the, the like if you're the physics of it all mm -hmm. yep the cams are there to to release mm -hmm. the weight of the of yeah the, of the draw yep okay. yep to an extent yeah and then uh and then all having two cams it does increase performance too because you have two cams that are pushing the arrow forward on the string versus really just one and then the wheel is is turning at the same time so oh. so you do get extra feet per second um having that extra cam yeah along with let off and a and uh yeah whatever else too and you said you, you, you the uh the draw is what'd you say 70 pounds yeah my, mine's at 70 pounds and then you can change that mm -hmm. right? you can adjust it yep and why would a person want to have it at a particular weight uh, comfortability okay. um like white, white tail hunting around here in a tree stand, you, you draw in some awkward positions. Um, so it's ha sitting on flat ground, you know, a lot of people can pull a lot more poundage, but when it's cold, yeah. when you're in a weird position, you know, a deer is coming behind you and you, you're trying to not make movement. Um, a lot of people tend to back poundage off or shoulder injuries. I hear of a lot of shoulder injuries where yeah. um, people are backing off on poundage and uh, I really do appreciate when people are backing off on poundage in, instead of a crossbow, personally. But uh, whatever gets a person out in the woods, that's that's so, really the biggest thing. So it, but if a person were strong enough, would it be better to have a higher higher weight, and why? Yes, yes, and no. Uh, the higher the weight, the more feet per second, the more potential pass throughs you can get on a deer. I think. What does that mean? Uh, like where you shoot the arrow and it goes completely through the animal yeah uh, so you have two points of bleed instead of oh instead of i one. see i see yep. okay all right yep yeah so um yeah the the more likely you are to get a pass through the more likely that animal is to bleed out and perspire yep which okay. which is the goal yeah you, one, one shot one kill is <laughs> one shot the one kill right yep. yeah yep. okay so that's always the goal so uh, people a lot of people they do have heavier bows, or if they're getting into bigger animals, you know, rib cages get bigger. Yeah, the risk of a shoulder getting it through that shoulder blade. Um, but you know, a well placed shot is a well placed shot. You know, if you're if you're confident at 35 pounds, I think that's what the state minimum limit is or, minimum yeah. is. Mm -hmm. You know, you can kill a deer no problem. Oh yeah, with the with sure. the right arrow, the right broadhead mm -hmm. at in the right location, you can kill a deer, no problem. Yeah. And, and if that's where you're comfortable at, that's where you should be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's, that's really the biggest thing. So, okay. Um, 
So then you got then the string there, yep, or yep. is that so, what that's called? Yep, or? so this yep. is the string here, and then these are the cables. Okay. Uh, the cables are what uh, the cams rotate with. Uh, you pull back, you pull back on the string, uh, and you hook onto the knock with a with a release. Mine's just a uh -huh. uh, thumb release. You wear it on your hand, almost like a like a wrist mm -hmm. band or glove or something. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, you pull back on that. Uh, the the cams end up rotating mm -hmm. with the cables, and the cables are what time time the cams to be in perfect sync or in sync. Okay. And when you release, the cables pull back push the string forward and and the arrow goes forward too so uh -huh. it's uh they're they're quite complicated yeah i mean, I yeah, mean there's they're... sophisticated design there <laughs> yeah, yeah there's there's a lot of engineering that goes into into each bow and it's it's pretty incredible the machines and uh the technology that an advancement that goes every yeah. every single year these new releases what's new and per, the performance increases and it's 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 just incredible, yeah. you know. It's not, uh, it's not just uh, recurve bows that <laughs> mm -hmm. that uh, hardly send arrows down. Anymore. Recurve bow is what most people like when you when if you're gonna ask somebody to draw a picture of a bow, they'd probably mm -hmm. draw a recurve bow. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and and then you got these counterweights here too, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. yep. These are these are stabilizers. Or stabilizers. Stabilizers. Yeah. Yep. And and these are just. So the bow sits in my hand equally or evenly. Yeah. So when I when I draw back, it the bow's not trying to cant in a in a certain direction where it's perfectly balanced to where my grip isn't. So goofy. if it, suppose you didn't have those on there, what would what would happen? You know, I would just have to. I would have to really think about lev having everything be more level in my hand mm -hmm. and really think about grip position and then potentially different pressures in different spots. Just um, another thing to think about. Yeah, and and possibly more torquing and more things to think about. And when you torque a bow, it's uh, it's really uh, one of the most. I guess it's it's decreases accuracy the most because when you when you torque your bow, that arrow's the the riser is going to be facing potentially this way, mm -hmm. but the arrow is going to still want to go this way. Uh. So if you if you don't square things up exactly perfect you're i mean it's, have accuracy. it's it's your accuracy goes from you know potentially this to that yeah and that you know that could be a wounded deer versus a, a dead deer yeah so yeah i mean there's there's so many so many little things that that go into archery and that's kind of what makes it interesting and exciting so during archery season if you wound a deer and you do wind up having to track it are you required to dispatch it with a, like a knife or a bow or i mean like some people have sidearms and stuff oh, like that man um i guess it comes down to uh whether it's on if it runs onto the neighbor's property and you don't yeah. have permission whether you have to call a game warden yeah um luckily i've never had to had to worry about that yeah but um yeah, yeah. It, it it's it's hard it's hard to say i would it's all up to the game warden's discretion in, in those regards i suppose yeah, yeah. so uh -huh. but, it, but for the most part i mean like if you come across it and you've caught it like mm -hmm. if you got a knife you should use that as opposed to shooting it right mm -hmm. well i mean yeah i mean <laughs> you're, you're gonna waste a little less meat doing that yeah. i guess but yeah. uh you know if if it's you know I mean, it's not, it's not, and it's it, not rifle season, that's you know? True. And that, so, yeah. 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 I, I would say, you know, if, if you shoot it in the spine, yeah. I would just get an, another arrow in it as soon as you can. Uh, and that way the, the animal can perspire as yeah. soon as you can. Yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Less suffering for the animal. Sure. And, sure. Sure. Um, well, it's just sort of like a situation that nobody wants oh, to be exactly. in. Exactly. I think that's probably a reason why a lot of people say, oh, I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to get into archery just mm -hmm. because... I'm afraid of being in just that scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the term for back in the day was wounding sticks, and yeah. and uh, whatever we can do to reduce that, the better off we are. I mean, it, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, the what'd you call them? Not the counter the uh, cams. The ca no, the uh, counterweights or the oh the stabilizers. The stabilizers. Okay. So then you've got um, like sort of in the center here, you've got like a sight right? And yes. That's, okay. Yep. yep. So this is a site. Uh, what I have, um, it's a fixed adjustable site. Uh -huh. And, uh, one thing that I've really liked about these fixed adjustables, 
Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have three pins right here. Yeah. So I have my 20, 30, 40 pin right in here, which is perfect for around here. Yeah. But I have it adjustable. So when you say 20, 30, 40, that's, that's the yard, 20 it, yards, 20 30 yards, 30 40 yards, okay. and 40 yards. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But also too, I have it as an adjustable where it goes up and down. Mm -hmm. So if I'm shooting different distances, like uh, I was out in Western North Dakota, uh, what was it? Two or three weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, I was, that was your mule deer. Yeah, that was my mule yep. deer hunt. Mm -hmm. Uh, if there was a possibility where I was going to shoot a deer at 58 yards, mm -hmm. I would just be able to slide that to 58 yards and that would be the exact spot uh, okay. where you, where you shoot. So there's no guesswork. There's no, yeah. I'm going to aim eight inches over its back with this. You want to take sight. all the thinking out of you it, do. right? Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. And you want to be as precise as possible because mm -hmm. at that, at those distances, that arrow, I mean, it's every 10 yards, it's dropping more and more. I mean, mm -hmm. I think uh, I would think that within 50 to 60 yards, my arrow is going to drop 10 plus inches. Yeah. So anything to be as exact as possible, yep. Yep. It's, uh, it's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and this is the system that I've really enjoyed using the last few years. It's the best of both worlds. Um, what's it called it's a spot hog tommy hog okay yep and this one's it's a it's a few years old uh they've come out with some new models since but this one's been extremely solid for me so far made out of this is made out of aluminum also like mm -hmm. i've uh i've dropped it out of a tree before and uh right on the ladder you know the sight hits yeah. and not even a scratch on it really? so yeah they're yeah. they're made extremely extremely well with those and yeah. uh um yeah it really uh really takes the ease of like, oh, I hooked it on a branch and it's can't, or I mean, is it going to be a offsite now? No, it's, yeah. they're built super solid. So I've, I've really, uh, really enjoyed those. Yep. Um, and but, then there's the arrow rest. Yep. There's an arrow rest here. This is a, a drop away rest uh -huh. and it's uh, cable driven. So these cables right here, uh, when the cable is pulled all the way down, the rest goes all the way up. And then when you release, it drops down and uh, the arrow flies right through that. It drop the the rest will drop once the arrow's coming forward, and mm -hmm. it just keeps going. So when a person is gonna buy a bow, I mean, generally speaking, how much of this stuff actually comes with the bow right out of the box? So there there are packages. Uh -huh. um, some some bow packages are put together uh, that ha that'll have like a whisker biscuit. It's um, it, they still kill a lot of deer. Mm -hmm. You don't see a ton ton of people like aftermarket that get them, um, but you it's like a, it's like it kind of is what it's described as, mm -hmm. and it's got a little slot down here, and yep. it's fibrous whiskers that hold that arrow into place, and yeah. um, instead of an arrow rest, in, that that is that is that the is arrow the arrow rest, rest. Okay. and. and yeah. Uh, when you shoot it, the, the fletchings and everything go right through that. Yeah. And, you know, they, they've killed a lot of deer. They, mm -hmm. there's a reason why they've been around for so long. So, and, I mean, is there a re is, so, it, you know, somebody's just kind of new to the sport or maybe mm -hmm. they're a teenager and, you know, their parents are, are, you know, not wanting to, uh, you know, shell out whatever three four grand or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I yeah. found out when I bought oh, my yeah. bow, yeah. uh, that, uh, um, I mean, it, it's the bare necessities would be, you know, sort of the, the arrow rest mm -hmm. and, and the, you know, just sort of the basic, the riser yep. and, yep. you know, and all yeah. that stuff. And yep. the sight, the rest, yep. uh, a quiver and mm -hmm. probably a, probably a release and some arrows and you can, uh, yeah. you can, uh, get shooting. You can get into a, if you wanted to get into a bow, you know, yeah. it, there are decent packages out there for 700 bucks. Yeah. You could get okay. into, you can, you can get ones that are less than that even too. Um, you want to go down too low there, but yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. But also, I mean, you think about it, I, the bow and arrow has been killing or yeah. killing animals for what? 50,000 years, uh, yeah. something like that. I, yeah. <laughs> but it's uh and you know, they had, they were made out of uh dogwood limbs and, and animal tendons. I mean, yeah. So it, it's been a very, yeah. very effective tool for a long, long time. You ever so, hear about those guys like in the Asian steps that used to be able to ride horses and shoot bows yeah. off of a horse and stuff? Yeah. Like that? yeah. And they were, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, kinda, if they saw a bow like this, they'd, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they would change their ways, I yeah. think. <laughs> so, uh, 
Well, um, okay, so those are the, the basic components of the bow, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then let's maybe look at an arrow yeah. and see what uh, what the different parts of that are. Yeah. And this is a, it's all sitting in a quiver now, yep, right? Yep, so okay. this this is uh, sitting in a quiver. When it's uh, when I'm out in the woods and, mm-hmm. or walking into the woods, it's, it's attached to my sight. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I have five arrows in it. Um, but oh, that one's actually got a got an actual head on. Yeah, it. it's not yep, just a practice yep, one. Yep, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, last time I took these out, last time I shot was well, I guess sadly it was when I was out west. Out west, yeah. So I haven't uh, I haven't put any practice arrows in yet. But, okay. Um, so I have a, a G five. It's a it's a mega meat is what it's called, and it's a, an expandable. Um, what does that mean? So when it it you shoot it, it's it's contracted like that, but once once it impacts uh, mm-hmm. the skin of the animal, these end up popping out oh, to increase, yeah. uh, increase the cutting diameter. Yep. 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 Um, and I, I guess personally I run expandables cause I'm partially, uh, <laughs> I'm color deficient, so I don't see greens and reds very huh. well. Uh-huh. Well, it makes it really, uh, really fish, really awesome when I'm trailing blood in green grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. as, as, uh, as much, uh, cutting diameters I can get or as big of a blood trail I can get the the better off I am so yeah, yeah. um yeah so I've I've run these for a while I've I haven't uh, actually two years but I haven't shot a deer with these yet so I don't know how yeah. well how well they work um and then the shaft is made out yep, of what carbon carbon it's made out of carbon okay pretty much all uh all compound bow uh sh- arrow shafts are made out of carbon yep in today and the fletching yep fletchings uh, so I actually built these arrows, uh, arrows myself. So it's got a whole bunch of little marks on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I have like, uh, the knocks notched. So I, in case they they were to spin for whatever reason, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have those in case they were to spin, I can always go back to the actual spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I put uh, four, four vein arrows together and, uh, my theory behind that is the the four air or the four veins will stabilize the arrow if if for whatever reason I didn't have that perfect grip. Are, is each one of those shot. green things a vein? Yep. Yep. Okay. F- veins or fletchings. Okay. Yep. Yep. So they uh, they stabilize in the air as best they possibly can, and with these two, I put uh, I put a um, little uh, can't or can't uh, what's the word I'm looking for. A little t- twist to them, mm-hmm. so the arrow's natural movement is counterclockwise. So I put the f- veins to where it encourages those to spin counterclockwise, and it's it's not fighting itself. So oh. yeah, it's kind of a kind of a neat little thing. It, mm-hmm. That's not totally necessary, but it's a it's another thing that increases accuracy and whatever else. So so you got some other arrowheads mm-hmm. there too for yep. so what yep. what are the different ones and what are their different purposes yeah. or ideas or theories behind yep. them? Yep, yep. So uh this one it's a rage tripan is what it is. And uh this one here it's an expandable. So once again it impacts the deer right here. It's got this little collar on the backside that uh that holds it in place until impact and then when it pops out uh huh it uh let's see where does it lock into place but yeah it, it has a two inch cutting diameter on it yeah um and those are razor sharp oh, yeah. too aren't yeah. they i'm keep i keep <laughs> looking at your fingers saying to myself oh i hope he doesn't Ooh. cut himself yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh that's a rage tripan i've killed uh two deer with those and really nice blood trail on yeah them. um but uh like i was saying you know it's it or going back to different types of animals or whatever you know yeah the all the all these will kill an animal no doubt uh but if i were to go elk hunting i would probably go to more of a fixed blade style just in case uh a rib bone more penetration more penetration yeah. it'll it'll force its way through where potentially like a um these are it, a little bit more delicate it yep, seems yep, yeah yeah mm-hmm. the, it has potential of breaking breaking something or um or yeah, that's really the biggest thing. If it encounters a shoulder of an animal, you know, it potentially will break the break the blades or possibly um, not penetrate all the way through. Pop. Yeah. So, okay. um, so if I were to go out, go elk hunting or something, I would probably go with a fixed blade because um, yeah. those are just going to be locked into place. This is a yeah. slick trick. 
Uh -huh. um, and it's a inch and a half cutting diameter. Slick trick. Slick okay. trick. Yeah, All it's right. a pretty cool name. Yeah, I like so, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this. <laughs> I've seen a couple deer killed with those, and yeah. they, they don't run too far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, G5 Montec is this one. Um, yeah, I, I start when I really started to get into it. I started using these, and um, after shooting a couple shooting a couple arrows they i kind of heard a little whistle with them so yeah. i i kind of back it every every bow is different but i kind of stepped away from those which and, is a big bet no because it causes the deer to yeah, move, right yeah, yeah it causes yeah. them to react a little bit so so when you're practicing shooting you know that you've got the practice heads and all that stuff but like do you recommend that people actually practice using the arrowhead that they're gonna use in yeah. The field? yeah yep yep so there's um yeah before you go out you want the, the goal is to have your field points fly like broadheads mm -hmm. uh, or broadheads like field points, depending on how you look at it. So um, before you go out, you're definitely not, it's not as important around here because you're shooting 20, 30 yards. Yep. Um, but, you know, if you're going to take a 60 yard shot, potentially if you're good enough, you're definitely going to want to make sure your broadheads are flying like your field points. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's certain little tweaks on your rest that you can do to make sure that those are flying flying the, the same. same yeah yep okay so because i mean obviously you know you don't want to do too much practice with those because those are expensive mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know if you you know do something you know you don't want to break them and because then you know yeah. it gets to be kind of costly and all that so. <laughs> yeah for sure um all right so suppose a person is like a kind of like a novice hunter but wants to do a little whitetail hunting um, in an area like this, what, what might that person do to kind of think about scouting it out and, 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 you know, what style hunting, you know, or sitting in a tree stand mm -hmm. or blind or, you know, what would be a real basic way for somebody to go out in the woods and get started with bow Yeah. Hunting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're, we're kind of blessed in this area where I grew up there. There was not, if you didn't own land, you know, you didn't have yeah access to a lot well around here there is a lot of public land a lot of public yeah. land so we're extremely blessed blessed mm -hmm. around here for that mm -hmm. but uh what i what i like to do is i i well if i had <laughs> what i do is i hunt public land mostly yeah about 95 percent of what i do is is hunting public land yeah uh and what i what i do um is i i do a lot of mobile hunting i don't leave stands in the woods uh, that gets expensive pretty fast, <laughs> yeah. you know, not, not knowing who's going to, you, you don't know who's going to be sitting in that stand the next day or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then two, you don't know. Has if... that ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it never has luckily, but I've heard, I've heard some stories yeah, of, yeah. and I, I've seen, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of tree stands <laughs> that get uh, taken over. Yeah, yeah. Get taken over. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be that guy. So no. I, I want to be in my own spot, yeah. uh, do my own scouting. And what, what I like to do is I, I hunt out of a mobile tree saddle. And I have it over here. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so, so that's this, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. This is all it is. There's a couple uh, couple ropes in here yeah. that attach to the tree, and then uh, this one here is my climbing rope. So uh -huh. I oh no, this one's my my hanging rope. So this yeah. one attaches to the tree yeah. when I'm in there, and then I have another uh, another one that's that's my lineman rope is what they call it, and this one wraps around the tree. Uh, so as, oh, sorry, I did have them back backwards, but this one here, it's, it's what attaches to the tree. Yeah. This one wraps around the tree. So as you're putting my, cl your climbing sticks, which are little like, uh, ladders that wrap around the tree, I have it over here, but I yeah. would have to disconnect everything sure, sure. or whatever. But, yeah, no. uh, you wrap this around the tree. You can, you have two hands. You can tie, tie, uh, your climbing stick on, you climb up, move this up with you and you keep going, keep going. And then when you get to whatever height you need, whether it's best shot angle or you run out of sticks, um, you, uh, attach the hang tree and it acts as a chair and you can swing and move and adjust. And it's, uh, it's, so you put your legs through it. Yep. Yep. You okay. put your legs through it. Uh -huh. Um, so your legs go through down here and oh, then yeah. it wraps, yeah. this is your waist belt. And then, uh, that hanging one, that hanging. So it, that that will support all of your weight mm -hmm. to go through that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they're they're a really neat uh, neat tool. Does so it get uncomfortable? I you know for a four or five hour sit, it's 
it's just yeah. as comfortable as when I started. So wow. uh, sometimes the lower back gets a little achy, but I mean, if you sit for four or five hours, I, <laughs> anyone's yeah. back gets a little achy. So and then so you so you obviously have to carry your or do you, or do you pull your bow? Up? I pull my bow up okay. se- with a little uh, cord. So separately you mm-hmm. do that, and then you got that up there. And- yep. Yep. Okay. So, so what you're saying is that tree, you know, set, getting set up in a tree is probably the best way to, to bow hunt mm-hmm. right? yep. around yeah. here. And, and a lot of times, uh, especially on public land, it all comes down to scouting, you know, so you use a, like an onyx or something. Like onyx that, or, is, mm-hmm. is a fan fantastic tool. But one thing that I've really learned is you can find the best spot in the world on public land, but that doesn't mean it's going to hold deer. So mm. it's uh, it's your in-season scouting. It's your off-season scouting, uh, yeah. which, you know, sadly, I haven't had a ton of time in my life yep. To, yep. With, a, with a kiddo and everything. Yeah. But um, it, it just all comes down to scouting. And uh, with this system, you know, you can walk two, three miles in, into where you're going to hunt. And you can find where the fresh sign is, fresh tracks, fresh droppings, um, and really set up in the best possible position, you know, mm-hmm. using your maps and whatever else, finding clear cuts. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really a neat way to, to go about things for yeah. sure. Yeah. Cause I always feel like with hunting that like 90% of it is figuring out where you're mm-hmm. supposed to be at. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Cause you, you could have the, the best, you know, you could have the best equipment and be really well trained with mm-hmm. shooting and everything like that. But if you go to a spot where there's no animals, mm-hmm. well, then you're not going to, yep. it doesn't yep. matter. Yep. All of a sudden <laughs> acorns start to fall and they're, yeah. they're a half mile away in, in the other direction or whatever. So, yeah. you know, find knowing where those deer are is, is the number one thing. And then yeah. being in a spot where you can, jump on them or yeah. you know be in the best spot for uh possibility of a kill so and that backpack there is that uh that's something that you bring mm-hmm. for sort of that that's your entire kit for when you're out mobile yeah in the field yep so this is more my close close to the road pack uh-huh. uh, if i was if i knew i was going to be going way way back i would have more of a frame pack oh yeah that way i don't have to drag a deer out sure for sure two sure miles yeah but uh yeah, this one here, it's designed for more mobile hunting. It's It was actually designed for a tree stand where it, this zipper comes out and then a tree stand attaches internally here. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, it, it holds my um, – it's got enough support to where you're not hurting your back too much, mm-hmm. and then uh, you're, you're able to walk through the woods, or I'm able to walk through the woods best I can without yeah. making too much noise. And, and uh, when I walk into the woods, I wear my tree saddle too. Mm-hmm. So you're basically wearing your tree stand and uh, you can climb up at any time whenever you're ready. So. so from the point you get out of the vehicle to the point you're up in the tree, and but subtract the time it takes for you to walk to the tree, mm-hmm. how much time does it take you to, to kind of get set up and ready yeah. to hunt? Yeah, depends on if I'm trimming any branches. But, yeah. you know, if I was going up in a pine tree, you know, three minutes. Yeah. If oh, I was in a quick. Baroque tree where there's limbs going everywhere, it's going to be... Yeah. 15 minutes and sure. a little bit more noise yeah so okay. yeah it's an extremely efficient way to hunt public land around here yeah uh i would suggest it to anybody um yeah. what's the earliest age you think that somebody could really mm. you know that's you a, joke about, say, about giving yeah. your son a little uh, yeah. suction bow yeah. yeah but when do you when do you hand him your you know his first I compound s- bow oh man um i got my first one when i was eight it wasn't anything serious yeah um you know, it was just like a, <laughs> you'd probably a fifty, eighty dollar one. Yeah. From from Walmart. It's I don't. Just I don't practice remember. target yeah, shooting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can you can get a little foam one at, you know, I don't know, two years old or whatever sure. when they're able to comprehend what they're doing. But uh-huh. you know, I'd say once they realize the safety thing first, yeah. you know, four years old potentially. Yeah. You know, if if they're drawing back and they they're comfortable and they enjoy it, you know, just let them. <laughs> Let, have Let, at it you know <laughs> so um and i know we got to wrap up here but um just uh can you talk a little bit about sort of uh breathing techniques and and mm. that sort of that moment that you know just before you release the arrow yeah um calming yourself is the biggest thing and and uh normally i am fairly calm until the arrow flies um you know i don't know what it is uh it's like a adrenaline thing where, yeah. you know, 
once once you release that, oh, wow, oh, there's yeah. the gear, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you get a, you yeah. kind of get a little excited, and there's an urgency, but you don't when you're well practiced and well versed and know what you're doing. It's not that scramble to where you know what you're doing, and then you can be ready. Well, then once that arrow flies, um, you know, th- then it's a different story. But um, the big, it's not as much about breathing with me. You know, it kind, it is a little bit like with a rifle. You know, mm-hmm. you gotta kind of control your breathing and and your movements or whatever but really it just comes down to making sure your form is correct you know you hit your anchor points you're not rushing it um and yeah that's that's really more what it is than controlling your breathing and and you you know your anchor points you know like uh like tip of the nose on the string uh string going through the corner of the mouth just making sure everything is consistent from when you're from where you're practicing to uh, where you're in the field in an awkward position. So, yeah. and, and then two, you know, just practicing how you hunt is, is another thing. So, you know, you can shoot on the flat ground, but chances are you're not going to get a shot standing in the flat ground, calm, no wind, you know, you're going to be 20 feet up in a tree with a weird angle. So mm-hmm. it might be yeah. worth practicing a little bit that way. You know, it might be worth, uh, uh, practicing with a crosswind at, at distance or shooting from your knees if you're hunting out of a blind or out of a chair, you know, shooting out of a chair and, you know, practicing how you hunt that way, that transition to an actual animal when the, when it's a live the, situation, yeah, when it's a live situation, mm-hmm. you're ready for it. Yeah. So what lessons have you learned about, uh, life, um, through archery? Hmm. Don't, uh, <laughs> slow down and, uh, really, really enjoy it. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, you, you know, you're not guaranteed another hunt. So, you know, in, right. enjoy things, you know, uh, enjoy the nature, enjoy the beauty, you know, and if you're lucky enough to harvest an animal, you know, I'd say honor the animal and, and do the, do the right thing by it. And yeah, and I eat mean, it. and eat it. Yeah. <laughs> eat all of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the best part about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good f- feeling, especially you got a family like oh, that. You yeah. bring the meat yep. home, right? Yeah. And everybody's like, Hey dad, you yeah. know, dad provided for yep. the family. Yep. So for sure. Yeah. So I guess, um, uh, yeah. What, so when you shoot animal or a deer, mm-hmm. what do you do with it? Uh, that, that's a, that's yeah. a one thing that I always enjoy mm-hmm. hearing from other people, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, at the deer camp that where, where, uh, where we hunt, um, you know, I mean, me just, you know, hang it up and mm-hmm. skin it. And mm-hmm. then, um, he's, uh, my friend Jack has the, has all of the kind of processing equipment right there. Okay. Oh yeah. So, so you do it right. At mostly there. cut it up with knives and, yeah. and then, um, he's got the ability to, to, uh, grind it cool. into, into meat and stuff. Yeah. And, Sausage. Pop it and, in the cooler yeah. and, and, uh, you know, and get home as soon as I can, you yeah. know, cool. but yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. No, it's a I, good way to do it, yeah. you know, because then you don't have to bring it to anybody, and mm-hmm. and then you know you got the meat of the deer that you yep. killed. <laughs> yep. yep, that's the biggest thing, and you yeah. know where it's been, you know what's in it, and yeah, it's it's yeah. And cutting it up is actually, I mean, it's not fun, but it's, it's rewarding, it's satisfying. It's satisfying. Is satisfying what I was say, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. is that it takes time and everything, but when you're done, you're just like, that's now the job is finished, mm-hmm. right? Then yep. you can kick back and yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. KK Archery mm-hmm. is, do you have a website? Yeah, I I don't have a website. I have a Facebook page. Okay. Um, so if anybody just search KK Archery, yep. that's Kevin Kuhn, K-U-H-N, mm-hmm. yep. right? Yep. And, um, and then uh, you can always contact me via phone too. Uh, yep. My phone number is 507-301-4218. Okay. So uh, feel free to call, text if you have any questions about anything archery. Yeah. Um, I'd be more than willing to help if you have any questions. Uh, questions about what to use, what to do, yep. you know, any, any tweaks that you think you should make, give me a call. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So wonderful. Okay. Well, uh, Kevin, thank you very much. Yeah. Wish you a, a success in your business and also a successful hunting season. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I, I appreciate you having me on and, uh, yeah, you, you enjoy the fall out there too. So you got a, you got some good grouse hunting coming up here. That's and, right. Yeah. And some good deer hunting too. So thanks Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I right. appreciate it. All right.